And what we are going to do is that we are going to look at a real life pitch from the AWE in um, uh, Europe last year, October. Um, we're going to dissect it in part and uh, basically see what were the best part of it and what could instead be uh, improved. Now, before I do this, uh, before we start directly with the pitch, um, I want to give a kind of like a broad overview of what are the pieces that are important to make a pitch a successful pitch. You have here that there is the pain and the opportunity is basically what is the problem that you're trying to solve. The product is how your product solves that specific problem. What is your differentiator with the competition? And in this case, it doesn't necessarily have to be a competition about another company doing something similar. But how we will see actually in this pitch is the current way of working. Because that's also, and the, the, the resistance to change and implementation of new technology, it's something that can be as tough to overcome as another competitor doing your same job. Then there is traction. That is, there is a measure of how that is perceived. Are people willing basically to pay for that, right? This is the strongest form of traction. The business model is how are you going to, how will you get paid and how do you scale that? As easy as that. People sometimes come with compli complicated charts, sometimes forget to mention it. It's just this, how do you get paid and how do you scale that? The investment is basically what you're asking. You and the team is actually very important uh, and it's often glissed over. And the reason for that is that um, there were some data that I was checking and actually when investors look at a deck, they spend on average the most time on the team slide compared to your to the product slide, compared to the problem slide, compared to the traction side. The team is one of the things that especially for seed rounds investments is, uh, is, being, is, is more looked at okay, for the longest time. Then there is the call to action, and then there is the what I call the why not. And the why not, I put it there because what happened that entrepreneurs tend to be positive. And, and it's a good thing because otherwise things wouldn't work also. But it's important sometimes to make a sanity check on this assumption, those projections. Those. So why not is why wouldn't someone doesn't want to invest or buy your product? What's... Have, have you addressed the elephant in the room? Is there an elephant in the room? And that's important because that is usually are going to be those things that people are going to ask you more and more often. So these are basically the nine parts of a pitch. And what we're going to do is that we're going to now start looking at one of these pitches. And here it is. Here. Uh, and I will stop after a couple of minutes and and then start asking questions and start working on it uh, together. So do you have questions so far? Is there something? Here we have another guest. Hello. Hey, Ron. How are you? Good, good. He's How a regular. We? Uh, we are three tonight. All right, nice. So nice you know... you guys. So actually, Ron is on an Oculus Go. So that's also something I think, uh, I mean, that uh, big screen support Quest, but also Oculus Go. And that's kind of like a, one of the entry level uh, headset. And I think it works pretty well, just as a measure. So Ron, good evening. You know the drill. Actually, good morning for you because you are in Canada, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's in the afternoon right now. Okay. So then, you know the drill, we're going to just start uh, going into uh, uh, this, uh, this pitch and analyze it and break it into parts. Okay. Hi, I'm Alex. Do you hear? Wait. No. Do you hear? Hi, I'm Alex. Not hearing, but seeing. Dana. Now? Yeah, I can hear it now. Yeah, the world here now. changes very fast. But if you've ever tried to build something in a city, you know that cities change way too slow. I should know because I was part of the problem. I was the chief urban designer of New York City. And even though I thought I was doing good, 
by applying rigidly and fundamental relations, I was slowing things down. Two women came along, though, to change my thinking. The first one was named Sandy, Hurricane Sandy. I live in Brooklyn, and Hurricane Sandy flooded my house, flooded my neighborhood. And in the chaos that followed, I saw firsthand that government was lost, ineffective, unable to plan fast enough and accurately enough for us. And who saved us in the end? My neighbors did. My neighbors, my community was able to show the resilience that was necessary to adapt and succeed. For the second one, Donna, Hurricane Donna. Hi, I learned technology in the cockpit of, cockpit of an F-15. I was in charge of flight simulation training in the Israeli Air Force, specifically how to adapt to in-flight mode functions. You must adapt fast and well, or you crash. After military, I became an architect in my hometown, Tel Aviv, but something was wrong. A new government plan that took 10 years to approve wasn't working. When I analyzed it, I found out that the city's predictions of additional housing units were off by 75%. Can you imagine an F-15 being 75% wrong? So I moved to New York to, move, to mo learn more about urban data, and I met Alex. We okay, so if we look now at the parts of a pitch, those four slides, what were those about? If Establishing we credibility. That's a good point, and how did they do it? Uh, told us a bit about their history yeah and um right and it's about you about the team right and about who they are their, their story now this is doesn't happen very often so it doesn't happen very often that when someone start pitching they start with the team yet i think this was a good choice because the team looks very strong right so i think it i think was a wise choice now when we go back and look at actually uh, quickly at their slides so these are these four slides right so I think I think I liked it so there was like he has he is certainly knowledgeable about the planning um, one thing only that I didn't get of it was like how how was the, the hurricane connected to this connected to the city planning that was a bit like it was not clear to me Another thing that I thought was, um, and this, this is a mistake that people do, is the following. So they talk, but they do not explain, and they don't let the slide support a story. So in this case, for example, there was clearly something going on. There is clearly something red, right? But what is it that she's trying to show in these plots, right? What happened is that someone that looks at the slide is going to try to make sense out of those graphs, while she's talking and this is going to detract from the person listening to her instead of trying to figure out what those plots mean so i think she could have said a very similar thing as saying look this was the cd projection in terms of x on y but then look how proper data look like they were 75 percent wrong so it could just be one sentence to really get this help basically what she was saying but here, overall, I, per I personally also heard other people that were in the audience talking afterward, uh, because Rona was actually at the pitch here. This was also, again, in uh, AW in Europe. Oh. Yeah. Um, and what happened, and everybody was like, wow, that's, that's a strong team. So I think it's good. If you have a very strong team, it's good to put it first. So here, I wouldn't really touch much. I think it was something uh, quite good. Do, do you share this impression? Yeah, I thought that the way that they used the natural disaster and personal experience to make the problem a little bit more human, even though there was a bit of gaps and you're assuming that there must be some planning permission mm -hmm, mm -hmm. problem yeah. to clean up, but I, I like the way that it flowed together to bring them in and then who they are. Yeah. I like that. That's nice. And also... They're well prepared, right? Because let's talk about, I mean, having a pitch with two person handing off the microphone, they really scripted and that's well prepared. 
And that's not something that you get every time. So respect for someone that steps on stage and prepare their pitch to the sentence. I really have, I think, have a lot of respect for, for, for whoever does it. I thought her story was really strong as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, totally, agree. So then they met and let's see what happened. We decided to build something together that will change how city is being planned. We'll build a city planning accelerator that will make planning right. It's called in situ. And in situ addresses the two main pain points of city planning. The first pain point is community opposition. You know, developers think they can outsmart the community and they hide their plan, but in the process they create mistrust and they also lose out on that local knowledge which can make projects better. The second pain point is government regulation, and yes, that was me. You all know how long it takes to get a permit for anything. Imagine layering on the analog environmental analysis required for any planning permit in New York City and how long that takes. We can quantify this. How big of a mess is it? So in New York alone, there were 321 major zoning applications last year. Approvals can take over 40 months and over $2 million. This is slow, wrong, and there is a better way. Within C2, we save 15 months on schedule and $750,000 from the budget of every planning application. By connecting direct... Okay, so now let's go back, back again here. So what were, what were those two slides about, right? We are talking about uh, these two, right? There was this one and this one. So what do you feel like they were talking about in this case? They were setting up their solution. Exactly. So it was set up to the solution and that usually, and it's about the product, right? The solution and usually before that, it's about the pain or the opportunity, right? It's like so much problem and it's about that cost us so much, right? It's about one problem slide, two problem slide, right? It, it doesn't have to be necessarily one slide here. It can be also multiple. So the problem here, it's about there is a problem with the public and with the, with the people that live in the city and then the agencies, right? The one that actually approve a planning. And this is like the cost of it, okay? So it's about um, uh, basically about the time spent and then they go directly here, right? They says, they start saying, this is how our solution work. Now, I personally would have waited to introduce this because the question that I had at the end of this was how, right? It leaves me a bit kind of like bittersweet, like, uh, come on, I, is it really serious? Are you talking really that you're going to save this much time and this much money? Uh, like, how? And now they are going a bit in into that and introducing actually what in C2 actually addresses those two problems, right? But overall here again, the problem is kind of there. I mean, would you believe that this is really a problem? No idea. Yeah, I wasn't but, but really too sure. I thought that maybe, you know, your man's talking about being the development planner and I thought, well, <laughs> was he the problem? <laughs> I don't know. You, you, you know what's interesting? Because, I mean, investors or someone that is, is shoot back in your story doesn't necessarily have a background. So it could be very likely a person like us that has wants to invest in technology and doesn't know very much about... Uh, about about city planning or about how the process work my and this is again this is my personal opinion okay this is my personal opinion if i look at this and also who they are again right because they established credibility at the beginning i would say well sounds like plausible right there are many other situations when startup pitch and you're like mm, is that really a problem 
right? It, it happens. I think that it might not be this case. Right. Uh, last time, Ron, we look at this. Um, uh, there was this app in VR for uh, for improving cognition, right? And there, I felt w- was a bit weaker than this. This is this sounds like a big problem, right? A problem that people might yeah. want to have solved. I have encountered this uh, this kind of industry before, mm-hmm. and yeah, it is a problem. So I, I, yeah, I just want to. For them to have their own uh, opinion on it, but for me, since I have a experience already, it is really a concern, especially in the local government. So, in this case, I personally felt like it's okay. I mean, the story for the sake of not having experience, yeah, could fit, right? I don't know much about it, but it kind of make, it kind of makes sense. And then they go here and they start. Okay, this is, and that's where I think things starts to kind of like crumble a bit let me show you how fifty thousand dollars from the budget of every planning application by connecting directly using ar we create trust we let people truly understand planning and with data we increase the certainty of outcomes the result more accurate faster city planning and it's working today in Brooklyn. This is our demo day in Red Hook. Look what the community sees. Using in situ, they see, explore, and comment on a real planning proposal in their own neighborhood in an immersive AR experience. And at the same time, in situ performs the backend analytics that measure the potential impact on, of that proposal on them, on the city, on the environment. We get their feedback, they get to be part of the change. Okay, so the slides that they showed were the following, right? This one. This plus the demo here, right? So those two slides. What were they try to, so we said, you and the team, it's covered. They mentioned the pain and the opportunity. So that's good. So there are a bunch left. What do you think those slides were standing for? The product. The product. Easy, right? It says, okay, this is our solution. Good. Now, what else? Did it, 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 they try to do something else? I feel that at some point she said, and this is working right now. This is a pilot we did. That, in my opinion, was an attempt to show traction, to show the fact that this thing is working, that they have stuff going on, right? So let's go back to those. Right. So one point that I had was the following here. Have you understood how this AR thing solves the original problem? Right. So how this giving an AR headset is going to solve and contribute to this. Right. Because this is the point, right? You are telling me that it is a mess when having community developers spend over 200K per project lobbing communities. I believe it. I believe it. Organizing events and, and giving away flyer, voucher, marketing to get stuff. I don't have a hard time believing it. But then how is VR going to contribute to cut debt? Um, it, it might reduce the ambiguity that people have in their minds about the impact of the development. That's a good point. And then, so let's say that things is clearer to the people, right? Because they see it there. But then how is that going to shorten the time, right? How, how is that going to make things easier? How is that developers that in this case, let's assume that there's someone that are going to use this, are going to buy this, even though it's not yet clear who's going to pay yet for this stuff. So they haven't mentioned the business model yet. But how is doing that going to decrease this aspect? Because again, 
solution was very nice presented. It's about two problems. It's about this and it's about this. We have a solution for this and we have a solution for that. Right? I mean, I think it was well structured. Now, the question is still how? Right? And you know what's, what's the scary part is that they have their answer and they've got asked this question. Now, I'm going to jump straight ahead to show you one of the investors asking these exact questions and see how the, how the reply is. It's quite steep. Okay. Follow, following up on that, how do you ensure that you have the critical mass, the, the actual inhabitants, to, to give you that feedback? The, the critical, the feed people, are the community, how, how do you ensure that you have the community backing, like that's user acquisition basically? So. There are many people that want to be part of uh, city planning and do not have the knowledge or source resources to be part of it. And we want to ease that um, that way, their way to, to be part of the change. And just from our uh, last demo days, the community feedback was amazing. And some very objective uh, activists that usually like just resist uh, every change came to us and told us, wow, I truly explored, I really saw what it means, I now understand, and they are on board. So by the time you get to uh, your legal requirement to engage the public, you will get only love because they were they were all, all along. What do you think? She seems to explain it in a very human way. Human way, I agree. Yet I'm an investor. I have to give it to you. You have to show me that that your solution solves the problem. Does your solution solves the problem? Right. Is that clear how having putting an AR headset is going to help? Right? You know what? I was I was a bit disappointed because I thought when I saw this, I said, these guys have a plan. It looks like they have an idea. I'm just afraid that they don't didn't put it properly. They didn't tell a proper story. So what I did, uh, I sent them an email. And I want to read you the email I sent. And I'm going to read you also the email that they replied. Okay? So, um, the other question was about who do you reach? Uh, it's about how do you reach the critical mass from the community? This question, I believe, was driven by ignorance. How does it work when the community is involved in this kind of discussion or assessment? Are people randomly picked from the street or give their opinion? Are there city gatherings where people, activists, meet up to discuss about upcoming or ongoing project in their neighborhood? So how do you make sure that you reach out to enough people with your solution? I know that in five minutes it's very hard to give all the information, but since the public opinion is such an important part of your solution, half of it, you might consider adding a couple of sentences to give more background. Well, then not reply. Regarding the separate question, also today at City Planning Commission, the public is welcome to participate, but not comment has to be accepted, of course. So the important thing of our tool is to effectively collect the comments and transfer them to the city developer planning team. And we plan to use classification algorithms to help drop, drop and count duplicates, arrange comment by type, etc. Ha ha. Now I get it. Because imagine if I get 1,000 comments from people. Do you think that the developer, how long it's going to take to make sense out of that? But if someone give more meaningful content, more, more meaningful comment, because was able to see how this is going to look like, and you are be able to classify, drop, count, and give me a chart of what people actually did, did and commented, now I could see the value. Right. So in this case, this was another typical example that I encounter very often when I have clients is it's not that they don't have the answer. They just haven't got that question. Right. If, if someone asks them, OK, but explain me better, because this is important. Right. How does that really work? Oh, it works like this. We have the plan. OK, then why don't you say it? 
that's useful. That's really good. Right? I mean, I think it's I, th I think it's very valuable, and it happens very often that people do a lot of work and everything laid out, but then they just I don't know forget. Maybe it's because sometimes entrepreneurs are really focused on their thing and they have a hard time stepping away from it for a second and looking at it differently. Right. So that's maybe why this happened. So this is this is one part that I think. We just adding an extra sentence, something like this, it would have made a world of difference. This is something about how this is done that will also deserve an answer, right? Because they mentioned, he mentioned briefly about analog data and how it's complicated. Well, maybe it's worth to cut a bit, for example, on the story of the hurricane, if you really are short on time, for example, right? And then say there are these many layers of data to now it's done in this way, this way, this way, and this way. This poses this problem. With our solution, all those data are collapsed and people can take decision faster. Random, eh? I don't know. These are, I didn't ask them, so I don't have an answer, but I believe they do. One last thing also that I want to say and congratulate. This was good. Not many people record good quality video because this is kind of like a nice video it's not a video made with a phone about when they do demo when they do pilots it happens so often oh yeah but we have done this we've worked with this client okay so what is the testimonial why you didn't ask that client of yours to sit for one minute in front of a camera standing on, on a tripod and say oh yeah it was great it was amazing Right. So pilots and this, this is a way of showing traction that it's OK, especially for early stage. If you don't have anything else r showing that you have a running project in New York that someone paid for, that someone is experimenting with, is still a form of traction. So I think this was good. And I encourage everybody that has a product to think about, OK, but when this is all over, how am I going to show that I actually did this? Because pictures are okay, are just okay. A video like this is quite good. So that I personally like. But then, just to conclude this section, there was another part. You remember that there was the problem, problem. Now, I personally felt that would have been a better story if this was here. So, it would have been a, this problem, this problem. The way we have solved it is this, using algorithm to plan. The way we solve it is this, by using and layering analog data. And look, we are actually working. Now tell me, what's the result of our, what the outcome of all this? Well, the result is amazing. We have got these savings in time and money. Then you have based, then I'm not anymore doubting about how I'm, it's not in my head it's not troubling me right I, I go forward and I see okay so you're getting me through the story uh -huh, uh -huh, so far makes sense there is a problem ah, you have a solution okay good ah, you're running something you're doing something actually good hm, interesting oh now I get how this comes because actually something even more interesting they mention about 750 15 months well what would have been nice to say is a breakout. So in this case, we save at least 100,000 and eight months of work. In this case, we save 650,000 and that's that money, that, that amount of money. This results in a total of this much out of this. So then everything is very, very tangible because it feels like they've done their math. And I believe they did, right? Because, I mean, you don't come up with this number uh, out of nothing, especially because, again, they established credibility. She is an urban scientist. He's a planner. And so he might have billions of data on which they could base this on. Feel, right? So does that questions or something that you want to add or maybe a feeling or something that, no, I, don't, I disagree with you, Gabriele. It was a bunch of crap. Can go ahead and tell <laughs> That's good. Okay. So we, if we briefly go here back, so we have touched upon the pain, the problem, a way to show traction, 
I mentioned clearly the team. There is the differentiator missing, but still we don't know how, how would they compare if there is anybody that is doing something else, the business model. This is something that doesn't have to be a slide about, but it's something for everybody to remember and it could be introduced in any, other, any of the other slides. A call to action and an investment. So let's see how the story unfolds. Oops. Thank you very much. It was... How big of a mess is it? Demo terms the back end. And this is the roadmap of in situ. That Brooklyn project is working. Developers are now reaching out to deploy in situ in other projects. Soon, the city will take notice and request in situ for every planning application. Projects will be coordinated. City, the city will accelerate. This is what city planning should be. And this is our model of adoption in all cities. A pilot project, private sector copying, a public sector demand. How big of a market is this? Well, the world spent $11.4 trillion on construction just last year. Planning is typically 0.4% of that, or about $45 billion. That's a lot of money, and you have to ask if we're really getting our money's worth. Because of my experience in New York City, I'm asked to consult all around the world on city planning. And I can see firsthand that we are not getting our money's worth. We are not planning to make our cities more adapted to climate change. We're not adapting to make economic development and job equality greater. We're not even adapting to make everyday neighborhoods better to the degree they can be. There is so much good that the world could do with $11.4 trillion. Let's just plan it right. Thank you all. Thank you. Feeling about this, about this last section? It was a bit disingenuous to me. You know, like he's, uh, I'm getting confused between the 45 billion and the 11.4 trillion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there were very tenuous links that he was making there. And uh, a, 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 a critical thinking, skeptical investor might think the same. It's a good point. Yeah, it, it, it's again about the money, right? So uh, money has to be depicted very clearly. I, I, I totally agree. A any other thoughts? Positive or negative? Eh? Could be also something good. Same with the um, presumption that they're going to get 100% of all the planning submissions with their product. You can never plan for 100%, you know. It's a true, true. Yeah. Precise. Yeah. Well, th this also now, we're going to dig into that because I think it's a very important part of the pitch that has to do with the business model, specifically for this one. One thing I want to say is that, again, about the preparation, they ended up very nicely. I mean, it, it seems stupid, right? But I mean, how many times it happens and yeah, um, thank for your attention. And then they step away, right? It, it just give a, kind of like not a good impression personally. It seems like you rush things through. Uh, while instead in this case, they are actually also pretty much in time. The pitch was five, uh, five minutes. They are five minutes, 34 seconds. If you consider the first 30 seconds before they start, they were very, very on time. So. I think, again, respect for that. Now, they mentioned about this. Now, one question. So what was what was missing? So what were they trying to address in those couple, last couple of slides? Attraction. Mm, in this case, I disagree. Because traction is like, how do you prove that there is, so is there a proof that what you're doing, that, so, no, sorry, how do you prove that there is demand for what you're doing, right? And that could be, for example, in form of downloads for certain products, paying revenue, pilots. So I don't think that those slides were trying to answer that question, trying to cover this. They, in my opinion, were covering this. That is like, how do you get paid and how do you scale, right? Because if you look at this, so they are trying to say, okay, I start with a, with a pilot project, private sector, government adoption. 
right? It's, it's, it's about that. Still, I have a question. My question is, how, who do you think, so how do they get paid? Good point, right? And and you know it seems stupid, but it's a very simple question, and you you will be amazed if every time you see a pitch at the end you go and says like, okay, did they answer this question clearly? And you will be surprised about how many they don't, because they are caught up in a lot of stuff. Because sometimes they do, but they overdo it. Oh yeah, we could sell it to this person like this, and we could sell it to this one like this, and we could sell it to this one like this. Yeah. Everybody's going to buy whatever you do. Now, at least you need to show that you have a plan. And it says, look, for the first six months, we're going to focus on this. After that, we're going to focus on this. That's it. That's the plan. It's clear. But showing that you're going to try to sell it to everyone, to, to an investor, I'm like, mm, you doesn't look like you have a clear idea of who your customer is. Right. And, and... Yeah, so the 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 thing about um, working with the government is it takes a long time. It's a good point. So how like is for your for example? For example, you are um, dealing with this contractor, and to get approval it takes a the cycle is very long. So I, yeah. I, I'm not sure if they can uh, work with 100 in in a year. I'm not very sure. I'm, the 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 year for me is not clear. Like, is that 2020 for New York, and then 2000... uh, yeah, 2022 uh, is the hundred here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good point. And but then this is also. Um, uh, this is also a doubt that is uh, arise from the fact that you don't really know how they're gonna sell that product. Because imagine if it's something that they could plug, right? You buy a subscription to this thing where you can import different format of data, right? For example, uh, for the old analog data and just magically pushed out like a nice chart that you can use, right? I don't know if that's the case. Then it's like, okay, well, I can see that. I can see that it could make sense. It could be fast. Right? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Again, government is slow, probably one of the slowest uh, entity that you can deal with. Yeah, because of bureaucracy. Exactly. So <laughs> who's going to give me the permit to actually use this tool and, and, the, and yeah. the approval? And I can't believe that. So this is also something maybe to, to, to think and address. It's a good point. Now, they've also got this question asked about their business model. So let's quickly just hear that. All right, some questions. Um, what about the, the, your, your business model? This is something I've not seen. Hmm. It, it's an interesting business model. As you can see, the first begins with a pilot project where we prove the effic efficiency of our method. Right, right. So now let, let, I want to pause a second. The person, what's your business model? But the question can be translated, how do you get paid and how do you scale that? That's it, right? It's, it's easy. It's, it's, it's very easy when it's phrased like that. So, again, let's... let's. And that's the project in Brooklyn. Already we have other developers asking us how we're doing it. So we get this... Uh, the, the real estate market is very much of a copycat market. They want to copy us. When we get to about 10, now the city can't ignore it anymore. Of course, I have ties to the city government in New York, etc., uh, and in other cities, but there's a certain point where the city starts seeing that it makes their job easier and communities start demanding it. So financially, you get this very quick growth curve as you ramp up other developers, but when you hit the city, you're actually not, you're trying to flatten your curve because then we get to be adopted by the city. We, s we flatten out in a particular city, but we go on to the next and have that same curve. Okay, so your client, your customer, is the city. It's not the construction mm. company, it's not the architect or whomever who is also yeah. interested to accelerate things. They are the accelerator, the okay. accelerant, the way you would, you would start a fire by putting a little gasoline. But once it catches, it requires municipal adoption in order to scale throughout a city. This is a very different from many other business plans of technology. 
because it explicitly uses quick growth and then goes on an annuity form. But because it goes to other cities, that quick growth is repeated and the overall curve is quite steep. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, <laughs> so the question yeah, is that. There's a reason why he, he mentioned that it's gonna plateau. Uh, yeah, well. but you realize that I'm you, you might you might have been in that right. You might have been in the environment. I am not. That investor probably also isn't, <laughs> right? Yeah. So so th this is like I just want to know how you get paid. H how you get paid? Uh, is it per project? Is it who to who is gonna pay you? Is it what is it, is it the developer that is going to pay you, right? And sometimes it is different, right? Because you also said that's not the same thing that you deal with. Well, that's a good point. You need to address that. Because people expect a business model that for tech company works like this. You have one user and they, it, it, if this is not the case, then it is important in your deck in here to clearly state that. Right? And cut 30 seconds about this part when it's about making the world better and, and all this that is important, but the recovery in this business model. And I was so also again disappointed that I sent in the same email also this question to Dana. And if I think it's, it might be interesting also to read again what she answered. So my question was one question was about your business model. I had the impression that the investor really wanted to know who is your client and not necessarily how you're going to scale and spread from city to city. Maybe I am also miss it, but I couldn't understand who is going to actually purchase your, your solution. Is it the developer? Is it the city council? Moreover, would you simply work on a project basis? I think you have all the answer to these questions, but maybe they were not clearly stated. The answer was, you're right. We have the answer and they didn't, they didn't come clearly enough. They didn't come across clearly enough. At this point, yes, it is a service, a service project basis. A developer pay us to perform AR demo days of their project to communities. Clear. But we do aim to build the app so it will be self-service, subscription based. Okay. Mm. Similar to the roadmap we presented, we believe that the first few dozens of projects in a city will be purchased by developers and they aim for a government adoption. And then it will be us implementing and adjusting the system to the specific government with an expectation to save them 5 FTE annually. Okay, now I get it. I mean, at at that point, I don't think that we can question necessarily the plan, right? I mean, I think we are not in the field uh, and we don't have their experience. They are the founder. They know they have done the research. But the story flows. It kind of makes sense, right? We're going to do this. There is a subscription model for the AR app that you can do by your own. And then we're going to implement that the government saving 5 FTE on project base. That is... Nice. I mean, I like it. And again, you see what happened? It's not they didn't have the answer. It's not that. It's just that somehow it got lost in the pitch. Did you notice uh, the expression that he used, flatten the curve? Yeah. <laughs> Seems so relevant now, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a good point because but Ron mentioned that. Like, what's the reason for that? Because you you actually said yeah, there is a reason why he referred to that. Yes, because um, like I said, it will take time. Ah, in that sense, okay. In that sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it doesn't. If if uh, it would take time for the government to implement such program for yeah, such yeah. Uh, innovation especially uh, AR is very experimental and there's no um, there's no proof yet you know what happened is that uh, you, you you're not in this case you are an early stage right so you can still expect that yeah. something they're gonna make now is gonna have an impact maybe in three five 
eight years from now, right? So you can still gamble a bit on technology. You can still gamble off, hey, maybe I don't need to have AR glasses to put it because same thing could be very done, done fairly easily with, with a tablet, right? So all those things that look like maybe uh, make it, in this case, appealing and sexy uh, could also turn into something that is just very streamlined. And I believe that if I'm going to see and if I'm able to walk on the streets to see where the trees are going to be placed, that on the other side there is a playground and that maybe the, there are, the, the style of the building is going to match the one close to it, I'm like, well, well, maybe after all it's not that bad. You know, of course, there's still a gamble, and, and but, but, but that's why... Uh, being an entrepreneur is exciting, right? Because you take this gamble and you try to do something that nobody did in the past, did before. Yeah, it's different for for government. So the approach for government and um, the uh, private sector is different. Yeah, and you know, um... and I totally agree. And you know what is exactly what is in that case? What is miss? What is missing is this. And in, in which way? Now, differentiator is so like the competition. So in this case, I think that they shouldn't have introduced a competition slide or like, you know, this chart that are like this and there is someone they are waste in the top right best category. In this case, it was not needed. But what probably good point that Ron is raising right now is the competition is the government. The competition is the resistance to change. So if you would have addressed that also, could have been strong like... What is their plan? I mean, he has been in this area for years, right? What is I his think plan? It was mentioned. Yeah, I think it was mentioned in the um, first few slides. The and what was public it? and the. Yeah, I think. Can you go back to the. Yeah, um, yeah zoom out. There you go. The city agencies and. This one. Yeah, but this still doesn't 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 say how they're gonna uh, overcome the resistance of the government, right? Mm, I, I'm not sure if uh, it was mentioned, but I I believe that is the mm. that is the gist. Yeah, that is yeah, the yeah. Thing that they, yeah. So this is going to be now in this in that why not could have fit like why would people not do it? Well, I'm the government. I'm slow. I'm not going to adopt innovation. So then you say, OK, right, that's the case. Then how do I say it better? How do I convince people that that's something? Right? This could have been one of those things that pop up when you answer these questions. So let me see. Well, we are almost done. I want I wanted to do two more things. Unless you have other questions. Something that you want to say, highlight uh, on, on the whole story uh, here. Anything that comes to mind? I think the last slide is unnecessary. Uh, yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, I could have easily... I get the 11 trillion for consumption. Yeah, it could have been point here. Something percent, point something percent for mm -hmm. budget planning. So you allot a certain amount of percentage for um, consulting. Like he said, he's in the consulting industry. Mm -hmm. And he's using immersive technology in order to leverage, yeah. in order yeah. to. Even though there is also another part, eh? there is this, eh? there is this actually this, uh, this one. This is something that we don't know yet how this really work. Because uh, he, of course, he po pointed a lot to the public and to this AR thing, because also the conference was an AR conference. But I believe there is also a lot going on here that we we haven't get the chance to know. Uh, so that I think it's maybe more more complex than that. But yeah, I agree. I mean, I think this should I have think been. Before, I think uh, the the expertise of the guy is within the within consulting. The, you mean? Yeah. Yes, within that area, the the one that you just encircled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly, I agree. 
So the whole thing. So to summarize it, the whole thing is uh, uh, it's better to because for me in my experience, the 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 people that uh, come to me, the common denominator is they want to save rather than to sell more. Yeah. They want absolutely. They want to they want to invest on what they can save rather than invest on making more money yeah so that's what i uh, notice from uh, my prospects so uh, this is similar to that yeah like it's rather it's better to save 100 uh, 750k then allow you to earn 750 than to than to waste 750k on something that is ineffective something like that yeah 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 and in short if there are three things that i would have addressed here was so how can you undeniably show that this is the solution so like how was this ar thing and this log uh this 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 analog data gonna introduce and now is that gonna solve the time and the money the second is what kind of traction do you have so success so how do you show that people actually want this that was not clearly was kind of like mentioned here and there but i would have put a slide that, about that and then the third which as we said the business model how you get paid who is your customer mentioning that i think would have made uh, a good impact also because they had the answer right they just had the answer and it didn't come across in it because with the email, you were able to think up for your answer. <laughs> it's a good In point. It's a good point. But you know what? And, and this is no. I don't want to. I don't want to advertise myself because I don't do this here for, for to get gigs. But you need someone that asks the questions that those people are gonna ask. And it can be look. It's not me. Let's forget about me. But take someone, a friend, someone that you trust, and show them the pitch. It says, "What is?" Is it clear? Yeah. Ask this question. Don't ask what do you think. Because if you ask what do you think, they're going to come up with all sorts of stuff and you don't know what to do about it. But you can ask, is it clear who is my customer, how they're going to pay me, and how am I going to scale that at the end of the pitch? If you do that and they don't answer, mm, pick another friend, do the same thing. If also their friend doesn't get it, then it might think, hmm, maybe I should revise this. So, but I get the pitch. I get the pitch. I get it. I, exactly. Exactly. I, I think. It, I think it was. It was good. I mean, the story is there. The team is strong. The product makes sense. And with those couple of extra info, the picture is complete. Now, the question is, what are we gonna do right now? And this, I wanna ask you. We are in this situation, and I wanna do this kind of like exercise. If you were them right now, in this. COVID situation in New York, huh? in New York, because I sent her an email today and I asked, hey, do you want to join? Look, it's a mess. You don't know if you know this? She's pregnant. She now gave birth. So she said, now, you know, I'm a bit hooked up to things with kids at home with a baby and this mess going on. I cannot make it. Totally understand that. No problem. But the point is now they are in this mess. And the question is, now what? I want to ask you, what would you do right now if you would need to raise money, if you were them? Is there something that you would say, okay, I'm in this situation, I need to raise 500000 to pay a developer and to pay a data scientist to help me with this, to create the first pilot project? What would you do? Uh, if it was me... <clears throat> and this is in my, you know, I've never gone after investment, um, so I'm quite inexperienced. But mm -hmm. my natural inclination would be to say, what can we do with our technology that answers a problem right now? I love it. I love it. Like, is there a mess that is happening right now? Because right now there are a lot of messes, right? And what if their planning app could be used to plan, for example, the space where hospital beds could go, where logistics could help. Is there something where well, their AR app 
on the fly could provide value right now. I was thinking the same. And I don't know if this is feasible. I don't know. But I think it's kind of like shows that you are trying and not going there and says, okay, well, now what can I do? Well, maybe I can find someone cheaper or maybe, I don't know. I, I, I think that's a good plan. But any other ideas? Yeah, so right now uh, I, I read in the news that they're planning to, to build um, these pop-up hospitals in the cent- in Central Park. So if they can uh, come up with a, uh, a mock-up, like a, just like what they did in Central Park, um, mapping the locations on where the, the pop-up hospitals or pop-up tents will be, then it would be uh, good. Yeah, and integrated to some extent okay. with the kind of data also that they have and they can manage, right? Because let's be honest, I think that a lot of people nowadays are also trying to do stuff with VR and AR. That is a big gimmicky. So it has to provide value still, right? It has to provide uh, value. So is there a way in which that thing could be shown? Yeah, not only some pop-up of how it is going to look like, in that specific case, it's not really the point. Right. But what you want to answer is, is, is for example, going to be enough? Is the positions, is, is the amount, is the, 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 the thing safe? Is, are things safe? Are there uh, exits or, or, I don't know, in case of an emergency, in case of the arriving of the ambulances, where, where, where is the flow of the people coming in and, 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 and living? Like, I'm not an engineer, I'm uh, in this urban engineer, uh, but these are my old questions that could be worth investigating. That could also be extended. I mean, I don't know the the limitations or capacity of their technology, but you could also apply it to the actual construction process itself. You know, are, are the steels the correct size for the structure we're about to put up? You know, and then map those against what's arrived on site. Again, I, I think that the concept is there and it's up to them to, as, as founders, knowing what the technology is capable of, to then answer that question and say, we could come up with this. And because I think that is something that only if they would be here, they will be able to answer and, and, and evaluate. Because the answer could also be, no, we cannot, right? I mean, but I think it's good to get in that mindset, right, of, of opportunities. What can we do now? And and. And look at it from from this perspective. I would be looking at it from a slightly different angle, mm-hmm. um, because their main community p- purpose, if you like, is to have them out on the street to see these futuristic buildings. But if we are in quarantine for another twelve months, then that's twelve months of their business that they're not able to do. So they should maybe be exploring like web VR, how to bring these models, how to make it more accessible for people virtually, uh, because that could potentially be a problem. That could be interesting, right? Yeah, these projects, maybe in other cities as well, they'll keep starting. So why not give the opportunity to communities to still participate in this, not put in VR glasses, uh, sorry, AR glasses, but do providing maybe something web-based that people can vote, comments. Imagine something where you have something and then you have a poll that pops up. Hey, do you like this? A one to five. And then people vote or maybe our comments. I think that's, that's also interesting. I would have to think about that. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else? I think it was. I think overall it was a good pitch, and uh, I mean, I think it's uh, it's uh, it was solid. There were some things missing, and I'm curious now how they moved. I mean, I, I've gone in contact with them. They said that they had some pilot project after this, so there were a lot of things going on. And now I think it's important just for them to indeed stay safe, and uh, and especially there in New York, it's particularly complicated at the moment. <laughs>